2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House, I'm Troy. In today's video, I wanna talk about why you should build your shop or your barn on your homestead before you build your house. Now that may seem a little counterintuitive if you're trying to move onto your homestead should you not build your dwelling first. And yeah, obviously you should work that out. Uh, you, if you're traveling long distances, you gotta have some place to stay on your homestead. But I wanna use our example here. And again, if, knowing our backstory, if you go back to all the way back to episode zero, uh, where we do our introduction, you'll understand that we weren't planning on homesteading when we first bought this place. I just wanted to live rural and didn't want to put up with a bunch of people. But um, what I did is the first thing I did when I bought this property, we were living an hour away when we bought this land and I wanted to try to make these improvements to it. And I didn't want to drive every day back and forth. I had a day job, so I didn't want to, you know, in the evenings and weekends, that was a lot of driving back and forth. So I really wanted to focus on getting some place to live here immediately. So I could have started on the house, but we weren't quite ready to do that. We were building the house up here on the ridge. We needed to get all that cleared off and excavated and building a full-size house. We knew it was going to take a while. I was doing a lot of the work myself because I knew it was going to take years. So, well, I can't do that, travel back and forth. Uh, while we're trying to build. So what we decided, this spot here where I'm standing was actually an old trailer site. Somebody had a mobile home here. Uh, when we bought the place, it was gone, but you could see where the footprint was. So our game plan was let's build a quote unquote house or an apartment. We call it the garage apartment when we first started working on it. We built this 24 by 32 rectangle and built it as simple as possible because we're going to live out of it. But knowing that at some point when I got the main house built, then I would be able to convert this into whatever we wanted to convert it into. Well, so the plan here was really quite simple. I mean, when you look at this, you think, my goodness, how in the world did you guys live in here? It looks like a dungeon in a Vincent Price movie. Well, yeah, it does now. Obviously, it's been 17 years since we built it, and it's become my workshop. But this was actually our, our uh, dwelling place. We lived here for over two years. And the way I built this, you can see it's an open floor plan. Now, keep in mind all the uh, dust collection plumbing wasn't here at the time. Um, we did have, it, it was completely drywalled. It was one open floor span, one open floor plan. And then even back here, I had a bathroom built out. Now, again, the bathroom has been torn out. It's not what it used to be anymore uh, now. It's actually storage. Um, but we, that was the only room that we built out. Had a little pocket door here. So it was a, the, the idea was with a 24 by 32 living space for just Kelly and I, we were going to live in there as long as we could until we could get the house built. So the, uh, the design when we built this was, wasn't anything that we found. Well, obviously we built our own. We designed our own. We, we poured a concrete pad first. So we poured a 24 by 32 concrete pad. And then we laid up two courses of eight inch cinder block. So that got it about 16 inches off the ground, and then we started our sill plate all around, and that's where we're going to stick frame from that point up. So we did standard 2x4 construction the rest of the way up, obviously putting in windows. Uh, there used to be a window back there. There was a window right where the camera was, and a window on this side. So you, know, you get some natural light coming in, a centralized door over here. Um, so we had those things in place. The cinder blocks allowed our ceiling to be a little higher. And the reason why I wanted that wasn't for the fact of living in a, in a building with higher ceilings. It was because I knew at the time when I was building this, once it was no longer a garage apartment, it was going to become my workshop. Now at that time, 17 years ago, my workshop didn't mean full of woodworking equipment. I really wasn't doing anything much with woodworking. It was actually because I had an old 59 Ford pickup truck and I wanted to restore it. So I wanted to make these ceilings tall enough that I could get in here with that truck and be able to work on it. You not have any issues, not any restrictions of ceiling height. By the time I put in lights and heaters and fans and all that, I didn't want to have my truck rubbing right up against it. So I was planning ahead thinking, okay, this is an apartment for now that we can live out of, but when it becomes a shop or a workshop, then uh, I can have certain things in place already. Well, I chose the design to be uh, 
to be roughly 24 by 32 just because that's what I thought I could afford when I priced out the material and everything that that was where I was leaning and of course the size of our lot that we were on here didn't want to have to do a bunch of excavating and, and uh, dirt moving we wanted to get something up quick but also searching for materials I found a really good deal on 26 foot long trusses and that I, I got those for $42 a piece which uh, at that time was, was a really good price then. Of course, this was 2000 But I knew I wanted to use trusses because I wanted to have a clear span in here, of course, not have any load bearing. And trusses were one of the easiest things to put together. And that allowed just these exterior walls, this wall and that wall, to be load bearing, and my end walls weren't. So this end wall is not load bearing. I could go right out, out there if I wanted to. But the wall behind the camera is, of course, where my garage doors were. So those trusses really allowed me, A, to have something quick, to have something inexpensive because they were on sale, and, and also allow me to have that clear span. So that really di dictated the size of the, uh, of the building that we were going to build. So even in here in the bathroom, which like I said is now storage, um, we tried to be as small as possible in the footprint. I, I had a small hot water tank that I put in, and then this is a air conditioner and furnace from a hotel back in the day. That was before they had the nice uh, condensed units. But this smaller unit uh, incorporates an air conditioner and a furnace. And then I eventually put in a wood burning stove once we moved out of here. So that was how I, I heated the wood shop um, when it became a wood shop. But the toilet and the shower over there, again, all that's been torn out. But, um, but being able to keep our footprint as small as possible, knowing as we uh, turn it into a workshop, we may not need a big hot water tank and we may not need a big air conditioner or a heater. So one other thing we did is in the process of building, I framed this wall out not with garage doors, but with windows and, and it, was a finished, it was a finished wall. This was actually where our bed sat. We had a bed here and this was considered the bedroom portion. But what I did when I framed this wall out, you can see here is my two rows of center block just here for a center pier. I didn't put center block all the way across because, again, I knew I was going to have garage doors here. So when we actually 2 by 4 framed this out, we used taller lumber material, went ahead and put the header in place, and then just went back and drywalled over it. I did that on both sides. Now, right now, this is my walk-in freezer where this piece of insulation is. So that's my walk-in freezer door. Insulation's just laying up against it. Um, so obviously I don't have a garage door there now. I've got a walk-in freezer. But the time came when we moved to the house and wanted to turn this into the shop, then I just came in and, and I would say I strategically marked my drywall, but that's not true. I finished my own drywall, so I can tell you where every single stud is in this building because I finished the drywall. <laughs> so it wasn't hard to find where my, uh, my studs were and just simply came out, cut the drywall out. Actually just took my reciprocating saw and cut some pieces, uh, cut some, uh, some of the longer nails that I'd put in there to, to tie all this temporary wall together. Just ripped the nails out, just pushed it right over. Actually, I took the window out so I wouldn't break it. But that was the concept, is when I was ready, just some quick cuts, bang. Now I'm ready to install a garage door. So something we were able to, to do that demo, take the wall out and put the garage door in just a Saturday afternoon. And the plan was eventually to put a garage door here too as I needed it. But right now, I was just at that time, I was just going to go with one garage door. So we built this apartment knowing that it was going to have... Um, other functions for it. So the garage door was you know, some of the key elements. Again, the concrete floor. We, we didn't, I didn't take the time to put a bunch of uh, laminate flooring down or anything like that. Uh, we kept the concrete clean and did put um, some sticky tiles on one portion, what I consider our living room. But we used a lot of area rugs and those type of things to uh, keep it somewhat enjoyable in the winter time. But knowing that at some point I want this open, unadulterated concrete floor to be able to do my work. So after living in here two years, we got the house completed and, and moved up to the house, and this became my workshop. And fast forward 15 years, we built this in 2000, moved out of it um, in the summer of 2002. So fast forward 15 years, and, and this is what I have left, of course. I've, I've come in and put a lot of equipment in, put a lot of wood in, spiders have taken over. It, it's really become a workshop. It's not nearly as clean and as inviting as it used to be. So it's funny when people come to visit and they say, wait a minute, didn't you used to live in this workshop? 
So yeah, yeah, we used to live in here. We lived in here for two years. And people look at Kelly and say, oh my goodness, you're amazing. How in the world did you... I wouldn't have stayed with him that long if I had to live in something like this. Again, it didn't look like this at the time. This is what time and sawdust and spiders have done over, over, the, over the years. But it really came in handy. My, my desire was build something cheap. I built this entire building. Again, this was in 2000. I built this entire building in, in, in 2000 for $26,000. Everything. That included the septic tank. That included uh, the pump for the well. That included all that. So $26,000 cash is what I built this for. And we were living in it within several months. We got it put together pretty quickly. So it was really to our advantage to get here on the property inside an apartment. Now, again, looking back in hindsight, I wish I hadn't built the house I built now that I'm into the homestead, more sustainable, more uh, logical living. I wish I hadn't built the house that I built, but is what it is. But I was, I was actually ready to stay in this for a couple more years because we were really able to put some cash away at that time. Uh, both Kelly and I had full-time jobs and you know, built this place for cash. It really allowed me to, uh, to bankroll some money there. But again, I, I made the mistake that, that we suggest others don't make, and that's you know, build a huge house, get a huge mortgage, and pay for it the rest of your life. We're working on that part. Well, so why am I saying that you need to build your workshop or your barn first before you build your house? Well, simply, if you think about it, with a homestead, you need storage. You need the ability to store a bunch of stuff. And you can see, even with all the storage I have, I still have stuff laying around. It's a little bit of an eyesore. My wife um, is a little concerned with my collection of junk, and I don't blame her. That's why it's down here and not at the house. But um, homesteaders, we always tend to collect stuff, and we need to have storage for things. So if you build your shop or your barn first, as you come on the property and, and are ready to homestead, then you've got place to store things. Even if you're not doing tractors and side-by-sides and all that type of stuff, just your tools, your ability to do your garden, your animal husbandry stuff, all of that you have to have out of the weather. You have to have in storage. So it's, it's an opportunity to do that first and then uh, work on your dwelling. What you find all the time is people build their houses first and they bring all this stuff in and like, oh my goodness, I got to scramble to put together some storage. And they put, to some, put together something that's not very well built or they spend a lot of money on a prefab building and it just, it just really seems like you're chasing your tail in that situation. So my advice, and again, I know this isn't going to work for everyone. My advice would be start with something like a workshop or a barn or a storage building but maybe something you can live out of at first. So as you're living out of it, as you're accumulating these things to start your homesteading process, you've pre-planned on that. So when it's time to build your dwelling, or maybe you're even going to move into an RV or a mobile home uh, at some point, then you've got this building in place to do other things with. So like I said, right now it's become my workshop. So I get a lot of stuff done, homestead related down here, but now the barn is being attached to it. So as I'm building this direction, and then of course we're adding on. So comment below if you agree or disagree. Let me know what you think. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. <clears throat> and check us out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we upload a new video. And check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Red Tool House. Take care, everybody.